Yes, 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 yes. So today is Tuesday, and here we are at the WTV. I'm Angela Odom, and you know, um, in my experience, most women undervalue themselves. Most women undervalue themselves. So I created a system uh, to help them grow their personal leadership skills in an effort in, a, in order to uh, show up with confidence in their workspace as well as their social environments. And so today is all about you, right? And um, this is the Better You TV. So every Tuesday at noon, this is what we do. We come here and we talk about leadership-related topics, things um, that will impact you personally. So we're really looking at personal leadership skills and how you grow them, right? And so before we get too far down the road, I want to make sure that I can see you and hear you. Uh, so that's why I'm looking this way, right? I want to make sure. Let me come up right here. I want to make sure I can see your comments and all those things. So again, um, so come on in, come on in, come on in. Go ahead and um, like and share. And you, know, you can also do those, uh, do a watch party right now. This is going to be real, real good. So um how you doing, uh, Monique? Um, so we have um, yet another opportunity to share something wonderful, right? So sometimes, you know, we have these workshops and these conferences come up, and we're like, ooh, man, I really like to go to that. <laughs> sometimes we're doing the week, during the morning, afternoon, sometimes at night. And, you know, we have our own lives going on, and then we look up and we're like, Ooh, I already know that's going to be really good, but I'm just not sure. Now, how do I fund this thing, right? What am I going to do about this? Good morning. So first, before we even get started, if you know someone who can benefit from the goodness of the Better You TV for women leaders, um, thank you, Monique. You can hear me and see me. You know, you know, I'm like, okay, let me make sure this technology is working. So thank you. So go ahead and share or start a watch party, like, comment. Um, and make sure you're not the only one getting this goodness, right? So for me, I'm Angela Odom. And like I said before, um, I um, wanted to make sure that women like you and me, emerging women leaders, are, um, you know, showing up with confidence. You know, we don't need to be like, mm -hmm, maybe and all this kind of stuff. No, we, we don't need to be aggressive. But we can be assertive and confident and, you know, find our footing as we're moving forward. So I created a system that helps women, emerging women leaders, grow their skills, personal leadership skills. And so what are we talking about, right? The system is SOAR, S-O-A-R, strategy, organize, uh, accountability, and relationships. Relationships have a lot to do with most things that we do. These people around us influence they affect, they impact. And so we just need to make sure that we have, we're developing the right relationships that are going to help us, right? So I served 27 years in the greatest army on the planet, greatest army on the planet, right? So military service was a pathway for me to, to get to where I am now. So that is a um, uh, founder of the Better You Project and also a um, uh, author of two books, and uh, you know, one of them is out right now, so you might want to get it, right? First one is Marco Strong, but uh, this one, this uh, most recent one is Camouflage Sisters, Leadership Through the Eyes of Senior Military Women Leaders. And you can go to AngelaOdom.com forward slash B-O-O-K-S to get your books, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's just focus on these four ways to fund your next conference or workshop. You're like, what are you talking about? So today we're going to just, we just talk about reasons uh, for you to invest in yourself, uh, the four ways to find your attendance at a conference or a workshop, and then how to present it to your, um, how to pre present this conference or this workshop, the benefits of it. How are you going to do that to the HR department or your boss or whomever the decision maker is? Like, how are you going to say, hmm, you know, what's your approach? What's your approach going to be, right? So that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. And we'll take uh, just a few minutes just to, you know, step back. Because studies show that leadership development yields results, right? So when someone invests in themselves, 
then that most likely helps, well, first of all, you know, themselves, right, as we're evolving and growing. It also helps everyone around that person. It also helps the organization. So it improves financial performance, uh, talent, attraction, and retention. So if you have, like, an organization has people with a certain level of skills or perform at a certain level, then that's going to attract uh, those types of people, and it's also going to retain them. And then it's the organization of um, agility, ability to um, react to different changes. There's so many changes going on. Sometimes you have people that are rigid in their thought because they've not developed a certain skill, right, whether it's a hard skill or soft skill. And so that helps. Leadership development helps that. And also employee productivity. Because if I know what I'm doing, I know I'm confident in this skill, uh, whether it is communication or whether it is uh, being able to write a document, go talk to uh, someone who might be two, three, four levels up from me, or maybe it's just a skill of uh, communication and uh, being able to listen, right, so that we grow from that. Um, so uh, that's what studies show, right? Financial performance, um, talent attraction and retention, organization agility, and then employee productivity. So why would we want to improve ourselves? We're going to help everybody else, and we're going to keep moving towards our own personal goals, right? So just to, um, you know, look back at hard skills, hard, hard skills, soft, soft skills, skills, um, you know, being able to competently um, do a thing, a task, right? And so we're talking about skills. A hard skill is something that you gain through education or specific training. This might be competencies where you learn how to use a certain machine or uh, software or other tools, uh, some kind of certification. It's a, these are teachable skills or skill sets that are easy to quantify. You know, you might have, for example, I got two master's degrees. That's easy to quantify, right? Um, you have um, you have some people that um, are architects, right? And so they've gone through certain training for that. Uh, soft skills are most often seen like a, as a personality traits. These are things you spent your whole life developing. Um, they uh, are called upon when it's time for you to manage your time. It's when you are communicating with other people or you're confronting uh, challenging situations. So hard or soft skills. You want to be able to articulate um, why you are attending this workshop or this uh, conference, right? It is a benefit like a hard skill or a soft skill. It's going to be one of those, right? And so you, um, we must make sure. I heard somebody say just again the other day, I don't think I'm a leader. And I was like, that is just not true. We, we're we leading someone, whether it is in a negative or a positive way. And every single person is doing that. I just believe that. Now, I'm not talking about someone in a certain position, um, necessarily, but everyone has skills, right? And <laughs> you are able to lead someone, you might not even know it, they're watching you right now, uh, determining how they should show up in the world based on how you react to certain things, right? So whether you're an office manager or a project leader, uh, all effective uh, leaders require a number of soft skills. So this is going to help you positively interact with other employees or uh, team members. So you want to be able to uh, Communicate well, motivate your team, handle and delegate uh, responsibilities, listen to feedback, and have the flexibility to solve problems because, oh, it's a lot going on. So that's the biggest thing you do is solve problems, right? So let's just review the top 10 leadership skills that are effective in um, a, an effective leader would have in the workplace. So communication, motivation, delegation, positivity, I'm going to need someone positive and trustworthy, right? Creativity, feedback, responsibility, commitment, and flexibility. Ooh, what if you had somebody with all of that? All of those uh, skills. Of course, there are others, but these are the ones we're focused on right now. So we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty, but before we go, um, which leadership skill do you use the most? Right? Like you might have a primary one or two, like, you know, I'm really good at, um, I'm really, really good at motivating people. I'm being flexible. I'm definitely trustworthy, right? I'm committed. So which skill do you use the most? 
type that uh, in the comments. Just go ahead, type, type, type. So as we move on, right, conferences and workshops are, these are like important ways to learn. You can learn new skills and strategies. You can make new connections. And also you can get exposed uh, to new funding opportunities, innovative uh, program models, and also colleagues working in your industry, other people, right? You're able to uh, grow. So that's some of the ways or some of the reasons why conferences conferences and workshops are important. And so you, you know, as you are seeking to uh, grow your own personal leadership skills, that makes sense? So type in packing if this resonates to you, because you're about to pack your bags and go to that conference, right? So packing, P-A-C-K-I-N-G, packing, packing, packing. So if you're listening to this or watching this on the uh, replay, I'm talking to you too. <laughs> so again, let's just pause for a second. If you know anyone who can benefit from the uh, goodness of the Better You TV for Women Leaders, go ahead and uh, I see them all packing. Go ahead and share, start a watch party, like, comment. Make sure you engage so that you get something out of this, right? And um, let's see. So let's go four ways to fund your next conference or workshop. Okay, bam. Number one, you pay and take advantage of any early bird discounts or bonuses. Number one, you pay, right? And so what does that mean? You What? Yeah, you pay, that's one. Request a scholarship from an organization uh, and then meet all the requirements they have uh, for that. Sometimes organizations will have scholarships. Uh, you know, they might sponsor a certain number of people to attend, right? So you do your research and find out that first, right? And then number three, you want to offer services to the organization. You might be able to borrow your talent, your time, your product, or your service yourself. Bartering. Hey, how about I show up and I do A, B, and C? It could be um, you might speak from the stage. You might you might have uh, you might be a photographer or a videographer, or you might have some other skill that um, that's conducive to this particular workshop or conference. So contact the, orga the uh, organizers and then see what you can do. Right, um, and then the fourth one, which we're going to spend a few minutes talking about, is you want to share the benefits with your HR department or boss, whomever is a decision maker. So those are the four, four ways to fund that. Other ways, you can just reach around and say, hey, uh, rich uncle, <laughs> whoever it might be, hey, uh, I'm going to need you to pay for this. Can you help me out? You know, that might be one, but it's not on my list, right? So these four is what we're focused on. So again, so you pay, that's one. You pay, you take advantage of any early discounts or bonuses. And so you just look at the price of it and you just go ahead and do it because you know this is a great investment. So you want to go ahead and get in early so you don't you know miss out on uh, whatever bonuses or discounts are, are, are there, right? Go ahead and get your, call up your BFF or your your work BFF and say, hey, go on to this. Let's do this thing, right? Um, you request that scholarship. Um, and so will every organization have a scholarship? Nope. But nothing beats a favor to try, right? And then the, uh, you know, again, going back to the uh, offer your services to the organizations, you know, barter your talent, your time, your product, or service. And then again, just one more time, you want to share the benefits um, of attending with your boss or decision maker, if, especially if it's during the week, right? If it's a one, two, three day conference or workshop, something that's going to help you with your credentialing or, um, you know, I just need to know um, this certain skill to help you in your own, in your organization, right? So which way actually resonates with you? And just type that down um, in the comments below. Which of the four ways resonates with you? Type that below. So again, you know, the conferences and workshops are an important way to learn new skills and strategy, uh, strategies and make new connections also exposes you to new funding opportunities, exposes you to innovative program models, exposes you to colleagues working in your industry. Uh, these are uh, valuable. So the trouble is most of us don't have the authority. Most of us don't have the freedom. Well, I won't say us because I do. Um, if you're in a workspace and you might not have the authority or freedom to send, send yourself to a conference, right? 
So sometimes the decision usually lies with a manager or, you know, whomever has the purse strings in the organization. So to attend, um, I want to say you make new connections, Mike. So to attend, you may need to, um, first of all, just do your research. Then you want to present the benefits and simply uh, make it easy for your boss or whomever the decision maker is. You want to make it easy for them to say yes, right? You want to make it easy for them to say yes. Well, I, I just discovered this uh, conference. Um, you know, I served 27 years in the Army, so I'm always on the lookout for um, different opportunities for uh, men and women who are serving currently. And there's this joint um, joint uh, conference for women. Um, and it's, I was like, I served 27 years, never even heard of this thing. And so you, so um, that means that the organizations, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard, are sending individuals to this conference. It's annual. They've been doing it like over 30 years, right? So what would you do? You would say, hey, you know, go do your research, look at the time of day. And, oh, by the way, probably January of 2020 is when they are posted dates for that thing, right? Uh, sometimes uh, September, October. But anyway, so the bottom line is you would start early and do the research and find out, hmm, how can I attend this thing, right? <laughs> so you, do you want to learn a simple process to to get a yes, a simple yes, so you can start planning your next business trip. Do you want to learn some process? That's that's my question. Do you want to learn a simple process? Type in yes if this resonates with you. Yes, 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 yes. The answer is yeah, you want to learn the process, right? So what you want to make sure you do is you start the conversation because if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So you want to start the conversation, right? And then you want to remember that um, you are a member to present the conference as an opportunity to your organizations. And this is at every point in the conversation. You want to make sure that um, whomever the, the uh, person saying uh, decision maker is, right, uh, knows the opportunity for the organization. And then it's really your job to illustrate the value uh, that the trip or that the conference will deliver. So set up a time uh, with the decision maker. Then you want to talk about why you want to attend the event. Uh, then make sure you do your homework, right? So why should you attend? So don't pitch it so somebody else can attend. Oh, yeah, Julie should go. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, Julie might should go with you, but, you know, you, you, want to, um, you want to set up a time and talk to your decision maker. So a pro tip is uh, you want to set the meeting at a slower time in the decision maker's day. You want them to focus on the value of the event and not, you don't want them preoccupied with their, their meeting or what's coming up next or some deadline or some email or, you know, whatever it is, uh, lunch. <laughs> you don't want them preoccupied with that. You want, so you set the time, do with their admin or face-to-face -face or can I come talk to you at this time? Um, and then you make sure it's a slow period in the day, right? So then you want to show the value. So travel and conferences, they cost money. And in most organizations, every dollar serves a purpose, right? So if you want to attend a conference, you need to illustrate all the ways it would make you successful in your current, your current role. And um, it would also make the organization more successful in your mission, right? So show the benefits that way. Then you, then you don't like focus on the benefits hard. Knowledge and strategy, uh, connections with individuals and organization, existing relationships and bonus opportunities. So, so like if you had um, uh, someone that's working in your field, but you all work together every day, do you want to nurture those relationships? And they could lead to other opportunities. And you could connect with other people, like-minded people, brainstorm some uh, ways that you all are working on a specific skill and how that helps both of your organizations, right? You know, while you're there. And of course, the knowledge and strategies that you would gain from attending. So you want to focus on the benefits. Um, then focus on the benefits and you want to make a plan, right? So your plan, um, you, know, you want to have like a thought, a thought out kind of proposal. So you want to uh, spend some time uh, researching the logistics, uh, cost, everything that's going to uh, be involved. Um, you know, can you drive to the event or we need to fly? Uh, what are the other expenses? Um, and you want to like go the extra mile and see 
how this conference would affect other uh, responsibilities and projects so you can identify what actions you can take to make the trip go smoothly, right? So as you wrap up your proposal, um, you can present uh, a suggested timeline for purchasing a conference ticket. So you want to say, you know, uh, the events on December 14th, so we really need to go ahead and get a ticket now because, uh, you know, the Better You Project right now, we're hosting uh, Learn How to Lead a one-day workshop at the beautiful downtown Ellis Hotel in Atlanta. And so now's the time to get the ticket, right? And so you want to give like a suggested timeline for person to purchasing a conference ticket. You want to secure a place uh, to stay, and then you want to de uh, debrief your team on what you learned. So why would they send you there when you want to just keep it all to yourself? You have to set up a time to provide feedback. Uh, you might be like one of those train trainer kind of things. You can present what you learn to your organization. Um, so you want to invite your decision maker to ask questions and then and then they see any other connections, um, you know, they might see some other things, other reasons why you can, uh, you should attend the event, right? So you make that plan, then um, pretty much just stay on message. Show, um, show that your attendance would benefit the entire organization. This is probably the best way because you're just saying, like, I just want to go because, you know, my aunt lives there and I think I just want to visit her. No, it's not going to work, right? So how is it going to benefit the organization? Um, so are you confident that you can pitch this to your boss? If so, type confident, type it down, confident, 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 right? Wow, that was pretty good, I think, right? So what I covered was reasons to invest in yourself, four ways to um, find, um, to fund rather your attendance at a conference or a workshop, and then how you might go about presenting um, the conference benefits to your HR, your HR department or to your boss, whomever the decision maker is, right? How do you go about doing that? What approach you would use? Um, I don't know if we talked about this whole leadership styles, right? Which leader, which type of leader are you? Um, but one of the things you might want to get yourself together before you go in and talk to your boss, before you show up at this uh, Learn How to Lead conference is, you know, what type of uh, leadership style do you have? And so you can go to AngelaOdom.com forward slash leader type, and you'll get like the nine common leadership styles. And you can look at that and give you, it'll give you an idea of the leadership style that you have. So leader type, T-Y-P-E, right? And it's all one word, leader type, AngelaOdom.com forward slash leader type. That might be helpful for you to use before you go in and talk to your boss, <laughs> right? And you can uh, refine your approach. But don't, uh, what do they say, study, study long, study wrong, just go for it, right? Uh, we're looking at imperfect action. So I did mention the Learn How to Lead One Day uh, workshop um, that we are all excited about prepping for you right now. Uh, Team Odom is prepping uh, for you. So that's December 14th at the Ellis Hotel, downtown Atlanta. And you can definitely get your tickets now. Uh, tickets are available now. So you just go to AngelaOdom.com forward slash learn how, the number two, lead. Learn how to lead, right? Learn how to lead, learn how, the number two, L-E-A-D, AngelaOdom.com. I look forward to seeing you there. And so that, uh, before we go, uh, if you just put in the comments, learn how to lead. I know you were listening, right? Learn how to lead. And that's the number two, learn how to lead. All right, well, I'll see you there. And, and prayerfully, you um, were able to gain some, gain some benefits from the four ways to fund your next conference or workshop. This is the Better You TV. This is episode 40. Can y'all believe that? <laughs> well, we've been doing, we've been uh, doing this since the beginning of 2019. And I'm very excited to, uh, that we're at episode 40, right? So commitment versus interest. So I'm committed to being here for you. I'm Angela Odom. And as always, I'm rooting for you. This is a weekly video show for women leaders. And I will see you next Tuesday. Take care.